Good afternoon. Uh, thank you for joining us today. I cannot tell you how happy I am to be with members of the media with no expectation that I'll talk about conference realignment. <laughs> um, it's a special pleasure for me today uh, to welcome our new head baseball coach, Sean Stifler, and his family, Jen and Wade and Scout and Penn. I just spent time getting to know them at lunch, and they're, they're going to fit right in to the Notre Dame community. Before I turn the program over to Coach, I want to offer some thanks and a few observations. Um, the first and most important thank you to the members of our, our baseball team. <clears throat> when as an athletic director you're looking for a new head coach, the quality of the candidate pool is directly proportional to the quality of your program. And for this search, we've never had an opportunity to have a program in a better position to conduct a search. Because the student athletes who are with us today and their teammates who are not built what is unquestionably one of the best programs in the country, we were able to select Sean from a group of coaches who were among the best in the country. I want to thank those students who participated directly in the process and helped us, who are with us today. First, let me note Jack Siska is not. Uh, he, got, he got hit with COVID. So uh, Jack played a big role in this, and we're sorry he couldn't join us today. But Brooks Coetzee, Will Mercer, Jack Prasner, Adam Terrell, Jack Ziska, and Carter Putz. Thank you very much, guys. I also want to thank the 20 or so members of the Notre Dame community who participated in the interview process. I think Sean will tell you he got a good sense of what the community was like, and we got a good chance to evaluate him because so many people participated in the process. Finally, I want to thank Deputy Athletic Director Jody Sadler, the Sport Administrator for Baseball. Jody ran this search. Uh, make no mistake about it, I didn't. Um, I was a little busy, and so she took over, and she ran a search that was as efficient and as effective as any I've been involved with during my time at Notre Dame. Our press release details much of Coach's success, so I'm not going to repeat it here. Other than to note that we were especially impressed by a few characteristics. One was consistency. As a head coach, he averaged better than 34 wins in his nine full seasons and led one of only seven programs in the country to have that many wins over eight full seasons. And he was successful in the toughest games, in the, in the environments that matter to a program like this. That was evidenced most recently by wins in, Chapel, in the Chapel Hill Regional over Georgia and North Carolina. But two additional things led us to conclude that Coach Stifler was the right man to succeed Coach Jarrett. The first was the respect he commands among other baseball coaches in the country, including some of the very best. It was informative of us to hear how often those coaches said when we talked to them, Sean's teams look a lot like Notre Dame's teams. From our perspective, that's a very high compliment. But then there was a the characteristic that meant the most. During our discussions, Sean talked in terms of family as much as anyone I've ever interviewed, both in terms of his dedication to his own family and his relationship with his baseball family. There's no place in college athletics where the concept of family is more important than this university. So Sean, welcome to our family. And I'll look to the members of the team to help uh, give you the apparel uh, that you need to do this. It's in here. Guys, will you present this to Coach? Thank you. Wow. I also will not be discussing conference realignment. <laughs> Father John Jenkins, Jack Swarbeck, 
Jody Sadler, uh, thank you for this opportunity. The University of Notre Dame is the finest <clears throat> in the country, and my family and I are very humbled to be here. This program is not looking to take a step backwards. We are going to, going to continue to push and use the momentum to continue to propel us forward, to compete for conference championships, and to be a mainstay in June, where championships are won in college baseball. I have some thank yous. My team down here in the front row, Jen, my wife of 14 years, um, just going through this transition, it just continues to remind me of how wonderful you are. Thank you for <clears throat> turning me into the type of man that can lead a program like this. Wade, Scout, and Penn, you guys never really get all of your father. And uh, <clears throat> truthfully, when we were making this move, I was most nervous and, and Jen was most nervous to tell the children because we didn't ask them to, to uproot their life and from their friends. But <clears throat> the second we did, they handled it with so, so much grace. And it was very, it was almost like they knew how special of a place this is and what opportunity it would be for our, for our family to impact and have an impact on a community like this. And so you guys, we're so proud of you and your mother and I love you so much. To Father Jenkins, Jack Swarbeck, Jody Sadler, Board of Trustees, thank you for this opportunity to challenge myself and for trusting me to lead a program and to be a part of a university like this. To everyone in the search, just like, just like Jack had mentioned, you hear about what the community is like at Notre Dame and you hear about how special the people are and I was actually more than blown away Every room I walked into felt like I was meeting old friends. And then on top of that, everybody had such a clear vision and understanding of what this university is and the mission of this athletic department. And that was so refreshing to see over and over again. And then finally to our community back in Richmond, <clears throat> VCU Athletics, Virginia Commonwealth, Dr. Rao, Ed McLaughlin, Tim Lampy, my, my sports supervisor, all the former players, assistant coaches, support staff, I am a product of them. I am here today because of them and the opportunities that they gave me, and I can't thank them enough, and, and we certainly will be, will be missing them. So why the University of Notre Dame? Well, to me, it starts with this. This university is one of the most powerful means of doing good in this country. And to have an opportunity to represent a brand like that and to be able to walk into living rooms and meet people with that type, with that type of brand and, and that type of opportunity was one that I, I felt was really, really special and something that I certainly wanted to be a part of. Two, it comes down to these guys, these players. And watching them over the last three weeks of their season and their journey, I don't think there is a college baseball coach or a college baseball fan that wasn't cheering for Notre Dame some way or another. The way they handled themselves, the way they communicated with each other, the way they played for each other, served each other, the way they handled themselves in the biggest, in the biggest spotlight. You're just talking out there and they were playing that highlight video, they're still getting chills. And, that's, and, and that will happen for a lifetime for these guys. And so to be a part of them and come in and let them affect me and influence me, I, you know, it was just something I wanted to take, take and, and jump at the chance. And then the opportunity to recruit and develop the type of players that this university is going to attract. Notre Dame will attract the highest academic, athletic, and strong-willed men to play in one of the best baseball conferences in the country. And, you know, I wanted to stretch myself I wanted to work with those type of like-minded people, and I wanted to be a part of that. So what does that program look like? So first, this program belongs to the players. It does not belong to me. It belongs to the players in the program currently. It belongs to those who came before. I will never be the centerpiece of this program or the most important part. In fact, I hope after today, it's the last time that I am the focus of the program. The program will belong to you guys, and I'm here to be a small part of that and to serve you. This program will be about development. 
and be at the front of everything we do. We're going to develop the man and get him ready to go out into the world. We're going to develop the student. This degree changes the world. And we have to have these guys ready to go out with it. We need to develop the leader. When they get out into the world, they have to be ready to influence and impact others. And if we do those three things, the last piece, which is developing the player, will honestly come quite easy. So we're going to base everything off of development. The goal of this program will be get, to get everyone who's involved in it to reach the best version of themselves and to reach whatever goals they have. This program will be about service and hope. We're going to serve each other. We're going to serve the University of Notre Dame. We're going to serve the South Bend community. I'm a firm believer when things aren't going well, look beside you and help the person next to you. And that'll put you in the right direction. And we will do that. We have to bring hope to everyone we meet. When we walk out of the room, when we walk out of a stadium, win or lose, I want people to say those were men of hope. They brought great joy in what they were doing. So what does it look like on the field? One, I'll never concede on pitching and defense. We are going to pitch and defend. I think that is, over the last three years in my evaluation of this program, the biggest jump that this program has made. The elite defenders, lead arms, and then we were able to control the side, of the, the side of the ball that we had control over. So we will always pitch and we will always defend. We will not concede on strikes and we will not concede on being able to catch the baseball. Offensively, we want to be versatile. We want to be able to lengthen our lineup. We're going to look to shorten and lengthen the field. I want people when they come watch us play to not know where the top of our lineup is and where the bottom is. We're searching for balance and we're looking for guys who can control their at-bats. Our coaches, our staff will be relationship-based educators. Everybody in this program will be a lifetime learner, including myself. One thing that will never happen is I will, I will never be the smartest guy in the room. I will surround myself with coaches, with support staff, and with players that will push each other, stretch each other, and continue to learn to find the best way to help us win baseball games and championships. I'm very aware of where this program has been over the last three years. I'm very aware of walking into a challenge like that. I'm very aware of what this university means, of how prestigious it is, the tradition, the history, of maybe some would call it challenges. I don't see it that way. I see attending the greatest university in the country, getting this degree, playing in one of the best baseball conferences in the country with elite athletes as what we are going to sell. That is going to be our strength. Everything that people will look at as possibly something that could, could hold us back or not get us over the top is what we will sell. That is what we're looking for. Those are the type of like-minded people we will bring in, and that is what we will embrace. We will use that as opportunity, and that's what makes this place great. In my mind, this is the greatest university in the country, and I am thankful to be a small part of it, and I am thankful to be your baseball coach. Go Irish. Media. Tim Priester from Irish Illustrated, um, yep. Notre Dame baseball class of 82 from 100 years ago. Fantastic. Um, I know that the players were involved um, at least partly in the interview process with you or met with you. I was curious as to what kind of questions they had for you. Um, well, I met with, with uh, Jack Siska. We, had, we were able to have um, breakfast with him. Okay, and I will tell you, he did such an unbelievable job representing these guys and bringing their questions um, to me. You know, I think, I think the first part was, you know, how are you going to keep us where we're at? That was, the, that was the one thing, you know, one thing that was evident throughout this. And every time I talked to these guys on Zoom and every time I spoke to them so far on the phone and, and with Jack is they do not feel like they're finished. This was not a one-time thing for them. They feel like they have more to prove. They feel like they have the core group to do that. 
they feel like they are willing to do the work and that they have done the work. And they feel like, and, and, and I explained to them, they're right. They're the ones who did the work. They're the ones that did the heavy lifting. And those games were won by them. And so um, it was really, you know, what are we going to do to keep us where, where we're at? And what was kind of my approach on that? And then, and then from there, there's some details on, on style of play and, and what my vision was, which was kind of what I explained, explained right there. And, and you get into analytics, technology, and all those things. But really just, just an overview of, of what my style is and, and, and how I was going to be. And, and I'm smart enough to understand this program is in a great place. I'm not looking to, to come in and make drastic changes. Like Jack said, I think a lot of my style of play that I appreciate is what, a, what you've done over the last couple of years. And so I'm just here to add to that and, and, and get feedback from them and continue to put them in positions to be successful. You, you talked about, you've said it several times, what a great university Norton is. It doesn't sound like you just came to that conclusion when they approached you about taking this job. Is no. that no. something that you uh, felt and knew about Notre Dame through your years? So I, I grew up, and I will never hide, I'm Roman Catholic, okay? I grew up in Western Pennsylvania where you watch Notre Dame football on Saturday and you go to church on Sunday. That's how I grew up. And I still remember Ron Paulus running around. All right? Um, you know, so, is he here? The guy's a legend. The guy's a legend. There he is. So, um, <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, there, we were very, very happy in, in Richmond, Virginia, and, and there, there are very few jobs that, that I think I would have left for. But uh, when, when, when the caller ID said South Bend, the, the hair on the back of my head st stood up. And so this is, this is a place that I've always dreamed about. This is a place that has always been in the front of my, of my thoughts. And, and um, you know, so, yeah, this is, this is something different for me. And what, what steps have you taken to keep the roster together as well as the recruiting class coming in? on the phone constantly, you know, and, and unfortunately it's, you know, because you, you have the current players, you have, you know, this year's incoming class, the 23s, the 24s. I mean, you're, you're looking at almost a hundred people that you're trying, so you can't give everybody, we're, we're trying to catch up. And right now I'm, I'm by myself, to be quite honest with you. So you're trying to, and every, every player, every recruit, and rightfully so, feels like they're the one, they're the, they're the only, they're the, they're the most special piece and they should. Uh, just trying to catch up and, and let those guys know that the, every reason that they chose Notre Dame has not changed. The tradition, the university, the degree, the impact it's going to have on your life, that's still all out in front of you. And I'm just going to help be an asset to that. And we're very committed to those guys still. I'm not going to come in here, like I said, last coaching staff did a phenomenal job. Look at these guys. You know, so I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm smart enough to realize that those players that they were recruiting are the caliber of players that we want to, we want to have here at Notre Dame. In addition to obviously uh, advising with your, your family, who within the industry gave you, um, you know, the, the approach and direction toward Notre Dame? You know, one guy, and he, I know he's familiar in this room, would be Brian O'Connor. Brian was down the road about 60 miles from us in, in Virginia. Um, got a chance to play him over the last 15 years. Looked at him when at, from being in Virginia, he was the model program that you were trying to, to you know, to copy. And, and so, you know, when when I started to really pursue this, him and and him talking to me and feeling like a lot of the things that I believed in and the traits that I have and the person I was would make me a fit for here really gave me a lot of confidence. And so, so he's one. And you know, there, there's other people. Uh, JJ Piccolo of the Kansas City Royals, the GM of the Kansas City Royals recruited me and coached me in college. Um, you know, another guy that I leaned on heavily, he has some connection back here to, uh, to Notre Dame and, and has worked with different people. And I think what Kansas City does, and I, I don't know if there's many people in baseball who are more respected than J.J. Bacolo. And so another person who really gave me the confidence to feel like I was ready for this. Lastly, assistant coaches, have you decided upon them? Not yet, no. Still working through that and, and working through that process. But... Uh, Hopefully, get at least one on board here, you know, in the next couple days, and then and then move from there. Thank you. Um, Ashton Pollard, blue and gold. Um, so you've obviously played in a lot of big environments. You've been to three straight NCAA tournaments. You've been to Super Regional. You played at Mississippi State. What have those experiences taught you about playing baseball at the highest level? Well, it tells you that you're not that far off. 
Um, you know, it's just the depth in a, in a few pieces. You know, and, I, and I, I've already, already apologized to these guys. You know, we were in the Starkville Regional in, in 21. I think we warmed Mississippi State up for you. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, we got them going. Um, but, you know, it, it's, it's, just, it's just, you know, one, you, you realize the caliber of player you need. You realize, um, again, what wins at that level. And I believe to win at the level that this group has been at the last couple of years, and this is why I talk about pitching and defense, you have to win 5-1, 4-2, somewhere. You have to be able to catch the ball. Very hard to outslug people um, and those type of arms late in the season. And so you have to be able to catch the ball. You also learn that more games are lost than probably won. And so if you can control what you can control on your side of the baseball, uh, you'll put yourself in an opportunity to have that timely hit. Um, and so, uh, you know, you just you take from those experiences. You, you, you learn from them. I'm, I'm an avid note taker. Every time I go to an NCAA regional or so on, I try to take notes on how can we do it better logistically, travel-wise, all those things to put stress off the players. But you also realize it just it comes down to the game. It comes down to the players making pitches, the players getting timely hits. Um, and, and really at that point, when it gets late in the year, you're kind of sitting back and letting everything you've done all year, letting them shine through. Tyler Horka, Blue and Gold Oats. Heard it. Oh. Sean, you've obviously talked a lot about Notre Dame, and you know Notre Dame has been a part of your life for a while. But I'm curious, over the last three years, while Link was making his run, how obvious did it come to you while you're trying to manage your own program that you know this was happening at Notre Dame, that Notre Dame was on the rise again? And, and do you allow your mind to go, man, it would be awesome to, to maybe try to do that there someday? Yes, you always allow your mind to go there. And then you, know, you also allow your mind to go, boy, they're doing a really good job. That's going to be hard to follow, <laughs> you know? Um, but you know, I think everybody looked up, and because of the university, the brand, what Notre Dame is, I felt like everyone just felt like it was a matter of time till the pieces started fitting together, and the right, you know, and, and the right, the timing was right that this place was was an Omaha type program, uh, and I think Coach Jarrett probably took the job because of those reasons, you know, and that's why I'm here as well, is to continue to build on that and. and and continue to see those goals through. Um, but uh, you know, as far as seeing myself, again, like I said, it's, it, this was one of those programs that I just always felt like I personally fit at if it had an opportunity and I would, I would really, really pursue it. Um, but you know, you're so busy coaching your own team and, and you're talking about coming out of COVID. I don't think anybody, well, we were just all trying to survive at that point, right? You know, keep your teams together, keep them moving forward. And so, you know, we had two, we had two really good years, just like they had two really good years. And so, to know what that coaching staff had to do to keep that group together, keep this group together, to have gone through that myself, I tip a cap to any coaches who were able to to not only play but succeed. And so, they did a great job. And then, lastly, for me, to be at somewhere for 15 years, I saw VCU put out a video. I think it was yesterday. Obviously, very beloved figure there. What was it like to? to leave something that you had established and then on the flip side to come somewhere like this where you know something is established and you're just trying to carry it on. Yeah, it's, you know, truthfully, uh, one of the hardest decisions you could ever make. We were very, very happy there. We were very comfortable there. And like you said, um, what I've seen on social media and the way people have reached out to me has been unbelievably humbling. You, you don't, you, you, when you're in it, you don't, necessarily realize that maybe you're having that type of impact and how they feel about you and you know but those are some of my greatest friends in the world people I admire those players did everything we asked them to do for 15 years not a tough place to play and uh, we went through some some tough times there and some tragedy there as well as we lost our head coach and that's how I become head coach but you know it, so it so it very very difficult and it'll, it'll be difficult for a while it'll sting it'll sting for a while but you know every day as I transition into this role you get more and more excited. You get to meet these guys. You start developing the relationship with these guys, and and, and you start to meet all of you and, and see how wonderful this day has been. And, and you know, to have my family walk, you know, walk into that stadium and touch play like a champion. I mean, that's something that I, you know, I'm not sure I could have ever dreamed that. And so my daughter said to me, my name was up on the jumbotron in the in the football stadium. She goes, boy, the pressure's on now, huh? And I said, <laughs> 
I said, yeah, Scott, they know we're in town, you know, so, <laughs> um, so but, uh, you know, again, it really, to leave that job had to be a, it's not about the job, it's about the place. It's about the place, and it's about this place. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everybody. Look forward to meeting everyone.